Hello, welcome back, ZRK fans, to another exhibition match. This time I'm going to be watching God vs. Embliss. And happy Canada Day, everyone, as well. This is Canada Day today, and it's quite good for that. So, let's get started. Oh, see, God starting out very quickly with an air factory. Rather unusual start, but God is the best player in the game, so he doesn't get away with it. While Embliss is starting out with a cloaky bot factory. And that is much more usual. Start getting a quick metal as well, and see God going for once again as well. Both both players are going for quick metal strategy. There's nothing unusual about this build so far. Actually, no, Emma's going for very quick wind generator. Interesting choice. I'm not sure how it's done at the higher levels, but I know I've, games I play is typically more common that you have a couple metal extractors and you build up, but well, you morph your commander because commander morph typically will have the first level as energy cell, which get to power for free without an ability anything on the map. But nope, God and Endless are both going for quick windmills. Not a bad idea, windmills are very cheap, and on a map like this, Iced Coffee, they are very effective since they, this is a pretty high, you see it's a high hill and windmills do a much better job when high up. And we see Endless and God both hitting each other, Endless doing much more damage with his, his glaive getting rid of one of the metal extractors and dealing quite a bit of damage to wind generators Looks like might be able to just get rid of all his wind generators. The commander is the only defense there is, and there's there is the the Avenger here, but that can only do so much. This is flying around, and the glaive is destroyed for getting rid of the last metal extractor. But God now been in the back foot, while Emblis able to repair that metal extractor that was hit by the napalm bomber, and continuing along. But another napalm bomber shot coming in. So God looks like he's probably gonna be trying to just win entirely outright with the napalm bomber. Just take out what he can, but Endless able to repair what he has here. However, he is losing one of his metal extractors. That is going to be effective. However, Endless is able to deal lots of damage with his rating. I mean, just a couple glaives have pretty much destroyed God's entire base. God, however, building up a laser turret as very good idea to do. I'm a bit surprised he didn't build a defender earlier on, but that is what he is doing. And Endless has a couple Jethros for dealing with the Napalm Bombers. So that should be fairly quick, however, not enough Jethro's up right now, and another Metal Extractor getting hit pretty heavily, while a Glaive coming in from the back side of the map, and the Avenger able to get rid of it before it can deal any meaningful damage, however, the Laser Turret would have been able to take care of it as well. Now that both players are in a bit more of a peaceful situation, but talking about the game itself, so I imagine most people who are watching are Akron fans, people who haven't seen this game much at all, so I should take some time to explain what's going on here, I'm going to slow down the game a bit too. So Zero K is, if you ever play Total Annihilation, it's very similar to that. It's in fact actually based off of that, though in an independent in engine, but it is very heavily based on Total Annihilation. And as such, you have your metal as your main source of income, and energy as your secondary, secondary source of income. However, there are some changes between Total Annihilation and Zero K. Energy and metal are equally valuable, for example. Anything that constructs will construct equally with energy and metal. So you need to have at least you need to have as much energy as you have metal, and typically you want to have more energy than metal, since energy is used also to power cloaking, power jamming, and if you have excess energy, it'll be used to improve the speed at which your metal extractors extract metal. Unit under and neither player actually has enough energy at this point to show that, because they've been doing a great job raiding each other. This is a rather small map, and given that God went an early air start, which is very unusual. Normally you don't see airplanes as the starting factory, but it does happen occasionally, and when it does, it, as you can see, be quite devastating. Now, another important thing to note is the opening commander is a very powerful opening unit. Unlike an Akron where you just start out with some buildings and useful small inventory, in Zero K you start out with a very powerful defender. Admittedly, they become less powerful as time goes on just because other units get more powerful and get larger armies. But at the very start of the game, they're essentially a laser turret on their own, or can be. Usually players will morph them, and that costs a decent amount, usually about half your starting reserves of metal and energy. But it will give you, in most cases, depending on how you set it up, it's per... You have builds that you set up, but most builds for level 1 are a light laser and an energy cell. Which means you get 6 extra energy right off the bat, and you also get essentially a walking laser turret. However, neither player in this game has morphed, which, as I said before, is a little bit unusual. And the last thing to note is factories, your initial factory is free. So in practice, your factory is essentially kind of like your faction or race in most other RTS games. Although in Zero K, of course, you can build other factories and rebuild factories. You're not just stuck to your first one, but that first one is free and builds instantly. 
So it, it dictates a lot about how you're going to be playing the game. Let's go back to normal speed and just to the game itself. Emblis getting some direct expansion going on towards the south of his base here, while God is a bit more focused, as mentioned before, on the overdrive. He is actually overdriving his mechs a little bit, as we can see the overdrive percentage in the tooltip bar here. It's a little bit finicky. Wind generators are much less reliable than, for example, solar generators, which aren't being built yet in this game. However, they are dependent on terrain. And, as you can see, it's also very frail. So, God getting another really good hit, and it's actually an extremely good hit, since the cloaking, cloaking bot factory is burning. And when a factory is on fire, it's no longer producing. As you can see, the glade that is being produced... No, oh, never mind. Actually, it does happen. I must have been an older mechanic that I hadn't quite looked up. But anyway, point is, it still had slowed down the production for a bit, and still damages... Oh, never mind. Emblis is just running out of resources. That destruction of the windmill, so ignore the flaming factory thing. That's irrelevant. <laughs> kind of embarrassing, I suppose. Anyway, people don't really... I haven't seen a lot of napalm bombers recently, so I was under the impression that was still the case. I'm pretty sure that was an older mechanic that was the case that burning factories wouldn't build. But at this point, Emblis still is back in the company. The destruction of the windmill was a really important move, however. That... Even then, though... Endless's windmills are not generating a whole lot of power on their own. They are generating 0.4 energy each. And at this height, normally they would generate two. But like I said, wind is finicky. Wind is not necessarily the most reliable source of power, whereas solar power is actually a very reliable source of power, but it's more expensive, twice as expensive as a wind generator. However, I would say that it would be better for both players to start building some solar generators around the map. As you can see, Emblis is very cleverly setting up some glaze to defend expansion. However, one of the glaze is coming in to attack. Should point out that God has built a shield bot factory to be able to compete on the ground. Getting a couple bandits will probably get thugs and outlaws. Thugs being a shielded assault unit and outlaws being a very powerful anti-raider unit able to destroy everything in a small circle around it periodically. Though they were nerfed in the most recent patch, so they're probably just going to be able to slow things down more than destroy them. And this glaive being forced away from the expansion, so God able to secure his side of the map and start his expanding attempts going. However, Emblis has been quite ahead of him in that regard. Now, God is much further ahead in terms of power economy, managing to get his wind power going up again and able to work from there. His metal income is not quite as far ahead, though he does have the overdrive as mentioned before. But even then, not a whole lot. He isn't. No, he does not have his overdrive income. He is not accessing metal, and thus he is not getting any overdrive metal. So Emblis right now is ahead in economy, and God trying to see what he can do about that with a bunch of bandits going down to the south. A warrior coming in. This is the Cloakybot Raider unit. Oh, sorry, Cloakybot Riot unit, anti-raider unit, I should say. And another glaive as well, trying to follow the bandit. But unfortunately for the glaive, that bandit got out of range, and these warriors are quite slow. So the main base will be fully defended, but. Actually, not even then. There's There are some paths around the side. There's no turrets in the area, and these wind generators are quite vulnerable. So this bandit's going to be able to get rid of the one wind generator, probably get rid of this one as well. Actually, the whole base is open to it. Now, at the same time, nothing is happening in God's base. God is not even expanding at this point. No, he is. Never mind. It's a convict. That looked like it was a bandit. But there is a convict here that is expanding to the north. So God getting his economy going. And a tick being exploded. This is the another Cloakybot specialist unit. It's an... EMP bomber, actually. Zero case specific mechanic, and as you can see, it basically is just a stun. But ticks are very useful for that. The Cloakybot factory also has the Zeus, which is a powerful assault unit that fires lightning. Also has the EMP effect, but much less effectively. However, the problem with ticks, of course, is they're quite weak. They're a suicide bomber unit as well, so that makes it difficult. But if they blow up too soon, they can't do too much. And since they're only hitting with EMP damage, they aren't actually able to do that much if there are no support units to follow up. However, on their own, they're still quite effective, at least at stopping armies in the right place. And here we see a glaive is taking advantage of this bandit being stunned and able to kill it. While a large force of bandits come to the south, able to tear apart Emblis' entire base and the Cloakybot factory have health. It's... Actually, it's a warrior coming in, but Emblis has surrendered. Very short game, and as you will notice, Zero K games tend to go rather quickly. This is not at all unusual. The way the game is designed is around quick skirmishes and very quick games like that. So I will be back with another match shortly. Just stay tuned.